Local 4 News begins right now with a breaking news alert. Breaking news, former TV anchor and city council president Charles Pugh accepts a plea deal pleading guilty to a lesser offense and avoiding a possible life sentence. Thank you so much for joining us this noon. Pugh was in court this morning and pled guilty to two counts of third degree criminal sexual conduct, a deal approved by the prosecutor, defense and Pugh's victim. Local Forest Guy Gordon was in the courtroom, joins us now live and Guy, we are hearing from that victim for the first time as well. Yes, we are, Rhonda, and with his permission, he's allowing us to identify him. He is 28-year-old Austin Williams. In 2003 and 4, when these incidents occurred, he was just 14 years old, a young man seeking an internship uh, with this famous news anchor, Charles Pugh, and we know that it went from there. He says the length of Pugh's prison term is not relevant to him. What is important is that he heard Charles Pugh admit what he did to him, and that's exactly what Pugh did today in open court. Did you engage in sexual penetration on at least two occasions with Mr. Williams? The fall from grace now complete. As Pugh admits, between September 2003 and May 2004, he had sex with a then 14-year-old boy, seeking him as a mentor. That boy, now 28, approved this plea deal. While Pugh avoids a life sentence, Austin Williams is satisfied he will carry a lifetime of shame. The shame that he put on myself, on the countless other young men who, who have dealt with him, um, he now has to feel that for the rest of his life, and that, that's going to be justice. Three first-degree criminal sexual conduct cases were dropped in exchange for this guilty plea. Pew still faces five and a half to 15 years in prison. His victim says he did this to protect others. Knowing that he was in a different place and there were so many other vulnerable young men, young gay men, um, this wasn't something that I felt comfortable that allowing to continue to, to, to happen. And he says he's gratified that he perhaps prevented future a victimization. The official sentencing will be on November 9th, and perhaps at that time Austin Williams will make a victim statement. Uh, but we know what the sentence will be because it's struck in the deal five and a half to 15 years. He almost uh, is also going to become a lifetime member of the sex offender registry and must not have any contact with underage males. We're live from the Frank Murphy Hall of Justice. I'm Guy Gordon, Local 4. Rhonda, back to you. And Guy, Austin talked about that pain that he went through. Did that play a role in some way in this plea deal? It, it did, Rhonda, but to a, a lesser degree. He was more concerned that the prosecution was going to call perhaps as many as four other young men who had had uh, this kind of painful contact with Charles Pugh. And it was a factor that he wanted them to be able to avoid it and his mother to be able to avoid the pain of hearing this testimony again. And coming up at five, we're going to hear again from Austin about what this did to him as a young man, the emotional damage that he suffered as a result. Mm, can't imagine. All right, Guy, we'll look forward to that story then later today. Thank you. Our coverage of the Pew case continues online and at clickondetroit.com where we have a timeline of the case which goes back to 2013. You can find it all under top stories. In other news this noon, crews have just put out a building fire in southwest Detroit. As you can see, the firefighters were on the scene working to put out a fire. It was a vacant building and they were able to extinguish it about an hour ago right along Michigan Avenue and Martin Roads. No word yet on what caused that fire. And Brandon joins us now with a, a look at what's kind of a gloomy day. I don't know why I got a car wash yesterday. Oh, man. <laughs> well, you know, at some point you just have to do it. So we've got some rain moving into the area, as you saw with Guy Gordon's report. It's pretty light stuff here on the east side around Detroit and the Gross Point, St. Clair Shores. We show the wider view, and it's coming down a little heavier over in Brighton, Livingston County, parts of Washtenaw County. Got a call from uh, Roger in Livonia, one of our weather watchers, who said, a little ice pellet or two is mixing in as well. Yeah, temperatures are in the 40s, but higher up, cold enough to produce some sleet or ice pellets that could mix in. The radar isn't really picking up on that. However, look up north across central lower Michigan and that blue little dot there, that is some wet snow mixing in, and that is more likely in our north zone through mainly the late afternoon or evening. We could even get a couple of breaks in the action there as we get through the 
middle afternoon, but temperatures barely in the 40s, wind chills still in the 30s in all zones, and that's where we're going to stay in the 40s. Cold rain and wind, we get a little bit of a break, but Rhonda coming up tracking heavier stuff later in the day. We'll do that in a look into the weekend already coming up. Now, stuff you don't mean the ice pellets, right? Just rain? Well, <laughs> okay, we'll see you here in a few. The Inksterman accused of setting up an iPad to record his girlfriend's 16 year old daughter in the shower is going to be in court later this afternoon. Larry Stitt is facing six charges, including three counts of filming someone without their knowledge. He's expected in court around 1:30 for a preliminary exam. He's currently being held on a $20,000 bond. And new this afternoon, a husband and wife are tied up, held against their will in a robbery, and now Detroit police are searching for the armed thieves. Three men broke into this house on the 19,000 block of LaShure. This is just north of Seven Mile and on the city's west side. They tied up a 31-year-old man and woman. They made off with their car keys, cell phones, a shotgun that was in the home, and about $5,000 in cash. A commercial building on Fort Street caught fire earlier this morning. Firefighters responded to the fire around 830 and heavy black smoke had overtaken the building, but the fire was put out shortly after responders arrived. No injuries were reported. A 45 year old man is in critical condition after a car crash early this morning. The crash happened at McNichols in the Southfield Freeway around 2 a.m. The 45 year old man was driving a minivan when a 35 year old man exited the freeway and rear ended that van. The 35 year old was not injured in the crash. No word on any arrests. And today in Icon along I-75 in Auburn Hills has finally been taken down. We're talking about that 45 foot tall beer bottle that you pass all the time. If you travel I-75 in Auburn Hills, it's the site of the former Big Buck Brewery and it has been removed to make way for a new restaurant called The Hub that is scheduled to open next month. The restaurant will feature two bars and outdoor seating. Luckily, the giant bottle won't be out of the public eye for long. While the exact price isn't clear, the bottle itself is actually expected to be made available for purchase sometime soon online to have a big area to put that in. Still ahead, there's one more reason to shop online. What Target is doing that they've never done before this holiday season. And a mother makes a frightening discovery while her child puts a quarter in a gumball machine. What the little girl got instead coming up. But first, an alleged killer armed and on the run. Why police believe that his Facebook page will lead to his capture. And we do want to continue to keep you updated on the big breaking news here in Detroit. Former Detroit City Council President Charles Pugh pleads guilty to third degree sexual conduct. He was facing up to 15 years in prison. This plea deal helping him escape a possible life sentence and a lengthy trial. The former TV anchor admitted to having sex with a 14 year old boy back in 2003 and into 2004. Sentencing is set for November 9th. We were the first to tell you about her. The Kidrapreneur, 11 years old, developed a product right here in Michigan. Guess what? Look at this. I'm in Toys R Us. She goes national. Her stuff right here on the shelves. We talked to her about this big break today at 4 on First at 4. When buying your next. Welcome back in Oklahoma. A massive search is underway for a man that police say stabbed his aunt and uncle to death. The suspect is on the run and making threats on Facebook Live. Let y'all know, look, this is real. See, that's a gun. That's the real deal. It ain't a joke. This ain't a prank. Investigators say that it started Sunday night in a town east of Oklahoma City. Vance opening fire on two officers and then taking off with their patrol car. After he stole their car and was driving out, he shot a couple shots toward us and I just so happen to get hit. Police are also saying that he was he has some type of disease and may try and spread it through his blood. So something they desperately want to get off the street. The Dream World theme park will reopen on Friday, three days after an accident on a ride 
that killed four people. This is a park in Australia, in the Australian state of Queensland, and it hopes that the reopening will begin the healing process there. All entry proceeds will go to the Australian Red Cross. The four people that died on Tuesday when their raft and on the Thunder River Rapids ride collided with another raft and flipped over. A Massachusetts mother in shock after she put a quarter in a gumball machine, but got a plastic container filled with pills instead. This gumball machine caught the eye of a seven year old girl, as most kids would. And while her family was out for pizza, this would happen on Friday night. When it came out, though, it didn't look like a toy. Her mother thought it was candy. However, when she took a closer look, she found a mix of pills. She contacted police who confirmed that the medication was likely for blood pressure. The mother is still reeling from the discovery. And she said, no, that's real medication. And we were just in shock, and I'm still in shock. I, I don't know how it happened. I don't know how it got in there. The restaurant has since removed the gumball machine entirely. Police are working to try and figure out how the pills wound up in the machine in the first place. Target shoppers, Target is offering up free shipping for your holiday gifts. The free shipping applies to all digital orders. Now through January 1st, Target is also increasing the number of items that shoppers will find only in stores. Among them, 1,800 new or exclusive toys. That is about 15% more than last year. Meantime, beginning next month, customers also can save $10 off on a $50 purchase. And then in December, it gets even better. Customers can save $25 off of purchases of $100 or more. Wow, oh, that sounds like a benefit to the procrastinators. I know one other in the studio. He does the weather. Well, Halloween is just around the corner coming up. The steps that you can take to keep your little monsters safe while trick-or-treating. Brandon, that's good news for us. Yes, it is. How about this? Blue on radar. Tracking showers, rain, Ice, snow, we'll take a closer look here. A chilly, chilly raw day and a look into your weekend. It looks better and better coming up. It's four stories of terrifying fun, but what really happens to your heart inside a haunted house? Well, I'm wired up and ready to find out. <laughs> Tonight at 11, come along with me as the ghosts and zombies do their best to put a fright in my night. <laughs> Then see how the heart-pounding action compares to some of life's other thrills and chills tonight at 11. We've recovered. Oh, do we have a big announcement for you about America's Thanksgiving Parade? From the Parade Company, another familiar face is going to co-grand marshal on Thanksgiving Day. We're talking about comedian and a Detroit native Keegan Michael Key. He is going to be the co-grand marshal for the parade on November 24th, joining an already star-studded cast. Key's co-grand marshal will be the one and only Judge Damon Keith, while Olympic gymnast Ellie Raceman and pop artist Mike Posner will also be along the parade route as well. Did I say that right, or is it Posner? Well, I've got a couple of little ones that listen to that. It's Posner, <laughs> but I know who okay. he is. I know right. sometimes I'm a little out of touch with musicians. Well, sometimes I know he's from here. You don't listen enough, and so you see the name, and it's like, well, yes. you don't hear it on the radio, but you can see it on your exactly. whatever. Also, I, Flo Rida is going to be in town the night before for Hobnob Gobble at Ford Field if you have tickets for that. So. Love that. It's and I've got, a big week. got the forecast already for, for Thanksgiving I Day. I do, I do. I'm going to wait until like middle November to reveal 65 it. 65 and sunny. Well, close. <laughs> You're within about uh, 30 or 40 degrees either way. <laughs> so could be 100, could be 20. Somewhere in the middle. Uh, of course, I have no idea at this point what it's going to be like uh, a month from now, but we'll certainly be on top of it. Look at Webster hanging out in the cold rain. 43 degrees with a feels like temp of 38. The rain is starting to pick up in intensity a little bit here right over Wayne County. Not so bad, but you see some of the yellow coming in from the west. That is heavier rain. And I mentioned earlier, Roger, our weather spotter over in Livonia, far west side of Livonia, said that he was getting a little bit of ice pellet action as early as about 1115. So just watch out for that. It's not going to stick, but it just makes things a little bit more slippery. 
slippery out there and some of this blue showing up right now in our north zone Lapeer County uh, evaporative cooling as this first little wave comes in the dry air tries to evaporate it's a cooling mechanism and so it transitions maybe this light little drizzle into a couple of wet snowflakes and again not going to stick the ground way too warm for that and the rain showers keep on coming they'll be coming at us for the next several hours we do anticipate a brief break through the afternoon and maybe into the evening drive but also another round behind it that could be even heavier as we head through the evening hours so 40s today feeling colder with those east northeast winds whipping around and again this evening some of the heavier rounds of rain coming through evening and overnight half inch to an inch total rain in some spots when it's all said and done cold front still back through Iowa or along the Mississippi River and you see some of the moisture that will pull in here from the southwest and from the northwest and then as we head into tomorrow we get sort of the wraparound effect of some of that rain up into Minnesota. Here's a look at the computer model and it buys in a little too much I think in the break. I think we're going to be pretty consistent here for the next couple of hours and the, the model picks up some of the blues in the snow, the wet snow in our north zone exclusively, but I guess we all need to be ready for that or seeing that. We want you to send us pictures on local four storm pins or email the local forecasters so we can get some of that on the air. I mean, it's the first one, so we have to celebrate it or not. Tomorrow morning showers should wrap up around 10 o'clock and then cloudy 50 tomorrow. Friday looks great at 58 and Rhonda. The big rivalry game on Saturday looking good. Could be a brief morning shower, but then middle, maybe upper 60s, a little breezy and Halloween looks awesome. All right, pulled out a couple of good ones for some big days around here. Turning our attention to good health, the biggest threat to kids on Halloween may not be what you think. Our Dr. Frank McGeorge is here with the simple steps that everyone can take to keep your trick-or-treaters safe. At my other job in the emergency room, we see a number of Halloween-related injuries every year. Now, while parents tend to worry about tainted candy and stranger danger, the biggest threat to your child's safety is actually from drivers. Children are four and a half times more likely to be hit by a car on Halloween than on an average night. Kids are excited and they dart out into the street and drivers simply can't see them. Add reflective tape to your child's costume to make them more visible and stay close at all times. Drivers need to slow down on Halloween and be especially careful backing out of driveways. Checking your child's candy for tampering is important, but that's not the only danger. Some popular candies pose a major choking hazard for children under five. Be on the lookout for small, hard candies and anything that doesn't melt. Go through their treats and pull out any popcorn, marshmallow ghosts, nuts, hard candy, raisins, and gumballs. Save those for the older kids. We also treat a lot of falls on Halloween. Be sure that your child's costume isn't too long, and if you put out Halloween decorations, watch where you put the extension cords. Trick-or-treaters often cut across lawns, trip, and then they get hurt. Have a happy and safe Halloween. Back to you. Yes, indeed, for everyone. Thank you, Dr. McGeorge. Still ahead, robots are now roaming a U.S. airport. How these little guys are making traveling and navigating a little bit easier. Watch we so this is not a plot in a sci-fi movie. Robots are actually taking over a California airport. It's real. Meet Norma, Piper, and Amelia. The San Jose airport unveiled the triplets on Tuesday. Each one equipped with a large touch screen giving passengers access to information about the terminal, like where to find, you know, restroom or restaurants. The robots also communicate in six different languages. Wow. Including Star Wars. <laughs> That's cool. It is pretty awesome. No cranky kids at that airport. They can talk about the robot the whole flight. I wonder if you could also just say, Siri, where is the bathroom? And she would tell you. I don't think so. No, you need you you need Piper. the robots. You need right. Amelia. <laughs> All right, everybody. Thanks for being with us for local four news here at noon, and we hope to see you later today for four, five, and six. And Siri, will it snow? <laughs> no.